Hello, I'm Stephanie Stepping from Quilt Addict Anonymous, and today I'm going to talk about 10 things that I do all the time that the quilt police hate. And yes, this is totally a clickbait video, but you know what? It's also to show you that there are more than one right ways to do something in quilting, and as long as you have a good reason for doing it and you're getting the results you want, you're fine. You don't have to listen to them. You do what works for you. All right, so we're gonna start with number one. I do not pre-wash my fabric. I used to do this all the time when I was a new quilter. I would get everything home, I would wash it, I would iron it, I would fold it pretty, I would put it away, but it just didn't have that like fresh off the bolt crispness anymore. And it just never looked as fabulous. And I kind of had trouble like getting it sometimes to fit the way I wanted to because all those starches and things that were in the process of creating the fabric, they're gone, they got washed away. And so that's one reason why I don't do it. The, but the biggest reason is I just don't have time. Like a lot of times we're cutting stuff straight off the bolt and then I am immediately making a quilt in three or four days so that way it can be done and shared with all of you guys. And I just don't have time to take a couple hours to then go wash everything, wait for it to go through that cycle, dry it, iron it all. It just, I just don't have time for that in my life. And if that's you, and you also just hate doing laundry because I also hate doing laundry. I have like seven loads of laundry every single week just from my clothes and my kids' clothes. And it, that's enough. That is enough. I do not need to add my latest quilt shop fabric purchases to that too. And it's fine. So you can totally skip that step. Now, I will say if you have a fabric that you're not so sure about, maybe you don't know where it came from, um, you, you're not sure that it was purchased at Quilt Shop Quality Fabric and it's like a really deep black or blue or red, go ahead and give that a pre-wash. It's okay. Um, better safe than sorry on those things. But I will tell you, I have not had any problems with colors bleeding as long as I was using Quilt Shop Quality Cotton. And when in doubt, throw some Synthrapol in there or some color catchers and you will be okay. So I've not had any issues. It all kind of shrinks uniformly when it's all done and gives it that crinkled look, which is always fun in a quilt, but you have my permission. You don't have to pre-wash your fabric. Number two thing that I do that the quilt police hate, that is I do not starch my fabric. I came across an episode of the Quilting Hour with Lee Chapel Monroe. And there were two very famous, very well-known quilting professionals on there who were going into great detail on all that they do to starch their fabric. And it involved like putting it in like gallon sized containers of starch and leaving it in the refrigerator overnight. And then finally taking it out and drying it and pressing it. Or like a lot of people will use the Mary Ellen's Best Press and go over everything. And I just, I, it's back to that time issue. I don't have the time to do that. And because I'm using most of my stuff straight off the bolt, it has a lot of that stuff in it already to make the fabric nice and crisp when you're purchasing it uh, straight off the bolt and in the store. So it's not super necessary to do if you are not also pre-washing your fabric like I do. You can totally skip that step, um, especially if you're like me and you do not have time for things like that in your life. I do not have time to have fabric sit in a gallon jug overnight of starch, in, it's just not gonna happen. Just, there's no way in my life that anything like that would happen. And even just taking the time to starch and spray everything, you know, I most of the time, I'm literally cutting a fat quarter off of the bolt and then Im immediately cutting into it. There is not time for that kind of thing in my life. Now, occasionally if it's been folded first, I'm gonna spray it down with some water and press it flat, but, I usually skip the starch because again, that's another thing I have to go buy and have on hand and I just don't have time in my life for that. All right, number three thing that I do that the quilt police hate, I'm gonna get hate on this. I press like 99.9% .9 of my seams open and people flip out about this. They think that the seam isn't as strong. They think that batting is gonna poke out through the center. You think it's eventually gonna come apart. None of that has ever happened. I've got almost, a, probably more than at this point, 100 quilts behind me. Almost all of them have had their seams pressed open. I've not had a single issue with it. I do reduce my stitch length down to 2.0, oh, 
from the 2.5 that's like your standard. Um, but that's it, that is the only thing that I do. And the reason why I do it is I get really flat, straight seams that I'm not able to get when I'm pressing it over. The blocks stay truer to size, so you don't have that little hump of fabric that's created when you press the seams over. And you would think it doesn't take up that much, but it, it does, it absolutely does. If you've ever strip pieced like two strips together and you press it under, you'll notice that like one side is just like slightly smaller and you think, what did I do? I messed something up. You didn't do anything. The fabric just took up a teeny little bit of space when it got folded over and now it's shorter on that side. And especially if you have a block with a lot of seams in it, that's really challenging. And it also makes really bulky joins, especially if you have a lot of points that you're working with and that causes problems both when you're sewing your block together to have it look nice. And then also when you're quilting, if you wanna get right in that, you're gonna chance breaking a needle and that just doesn't happen when you press your seams open. They stay super flat, you get really precise points because everything is nice and tidy underneath and you doesn't, like a lot of times when I would press my seams under, it would look like my point, my point was correct. It was absolutely correct. But by the time you had that little bit of fabric taken over when you press it, all of a sudden that point didn't look right anymore. You just don't get that when you're pressing seams open. And pretty much every millennial and under professional quilter that I know presses their seams open, almost all of us. And I think like maybe at one point in time, when we were all being taught to press seams under, there was maybe a reason why you didn't do that. Maybe the batting wasn't as good as it is today or the sewing machines aren't as good as they are today. So maybe in history, there was a reason why we did that, but you just don't need to do it anymore. And I get way, way better results, both in the piecing and the quilting when I press my seams open. The number four thing that I do that the quilt police hate is that I stitch in the ditch with my seams pressed open. And technically stitching in the ditch is always stitching next to the ditch because in like a traditional sense, you have your seam and it's been folded over and you're gonna be stitching in like the low side of that seam. So you're not in the seam, you're next to the seam anyway. And that's all you're doing when you're quilting with your seams open too. You're gonna stitch right next to that seam. You can see that I have stitched right next to the ditch on all of these. Everything is fine. All these seams are pressed open and look at how fantastic all these points are. I would not be able to get that if I had pressed them under. It would not happen. I would be losing points left and right. And I have done this time and again and every single time it turns out absolutely fantastic. Only once, once have I had an issue with a seam getting popped open. And it was because I had to pick back and I had gone over that a couple of times and it, it, it was just too much stress. It probably would have had issues with any if it was pressed over too. And it's absolutely fantastic and you totally can do it. You're not gonna break your threads. All right, thing number five that I do that the quilt police hate, and that's using friction gel pens. I, these are great for marking on quilts, both for like if you're marking a half square triangle and you need to mark your center line to stitch down to make two at a time half square triangles. These are fabulous for that because they go away with heat, but they're also great for marking your quilt top when you're quilting. And people like to complain about these because they come back if it gets cold. It has to be really, really cold. Like you would need to leave your quilt out in sub-zero temperatures in the car all night long in order to see this quilting line come back. And I'm gonna show you proof of that. I'm gonna show you a quilt that traveled all over the place, got mailed all over the United States, and I marked all over the top of this when I was quilting it, not a single line came back. So this is Dimensions. This was a block of the month that we did several years ago using Kinkami shades from Clothworks. And I marked the center line of every single one of these triangles so I knew where to turn. And not a single line has come back. And you can see, here's a close up view, it's gone. And this quilt went all over the United States. It traveled the country for a year. It would have been in planes and cargo holds. It would have been on unheated trucks, shipped and just cold, cold, very cold. Everything's fine. There is not a single mark on here. Everything is absolutely fantastic. So you have my permission. You can absolutely use the friction gel pens and you do not have to worry about the coming back. And if they ever were to come back, all you have to do is put an iron to it and it will go away. So you do not need to worry about 
you know, your grandkid throwing it out because it ended up with all these marks on it. You just tell them, hey, I use one of these. If you ever see a mark come back on it, just put a little heat on it and it'll be fine. It'll go away. That's it. That's all you gotta do. It's fine. Quit poo-pooing these quilt police. They're awesome. Thing number six, we're at six that I do, that quilt police hate. And that's that I do not save every scrap. I know gas horror, everyone wants to know how I save all my scraps. The answer is if it is smaller than a fat quarter, I don't want it. Especially if I've already made a quilt out of it, I'm done. I've had my experience. I very much enjoyed that fabric. I have a finished thing. I do not need to save the extras. But don't worry, I don't throw them all out. What happens is, we have this bin of extras, and this is a combination of things that are smaller than a fat quarter or smaller than a quarter yard cut that we wouldn't sell as a remnant, as well as extras from quilts. This is an extra from a quilt. This is a cut off from the quilt I'm working on right now. We had a little bit extra when I was cutting for my strip piecing. I don't need to have those but there are members of my team who very much enjoy working with small little things. So they pick through this and they use it for whatever they want and whatever doesn't get used gets donated to a good cause. Currently this basket next week is going to go to an organization at my local quilt guild that makes doll quilts for preschoolers in our area to get as Christmas gifts. It's a great organization, great to send some fabrics to, but you know what, I don't, I don't need this in my life. I don't need this tiny little cut off thing. I know somebody will appreciate it, it's just not me. So someone else can have it and have some fun with it. So don't feel like you have to save every scrap either. I guarantee there are organizations or people you know in your quilting circle who love to have a basket like this to make something pretty out of. Thing number seven that I do, it's gonna piss off the quilt police. I do not believe that every fabric is pretty if you cut it off small enough. I believe that there exists in this world ugly fabric and my ugly might be somebody else's this is so beautiful i cannot wait to use it in my next project so ugly is totally relative but to me there are fabrics that i would not use unless i was absolutely dire and desperate and we all have those in our own stashes where we look at it we're like what the hell was i thinking when i bought that we all have those and it's okay, you don't have to cut it up teeny tiny and use it. You can just donate it, give it to somebody who does enjoy those things. It's totally fine. My, my reps laugh at me because when I am going through um, and picking out fabric for the shop, I'm immediately like, nope, uh -uh, not us. And it's just, it's not a, a dig at anybody. It's not a, you know, a diss on the designer that created that fabric. It's just not my cup of tea. And it's not the cup of tea of, I think your guys's taste because I've been buying fabric for four years now. I think I know what you guys are gonna like or not like. I'm usually pretty good at picking something that you guys are going to enjoy. Every once in a while I have a dud, but for the most part, like you have your things that you like and you don't need to feel like you have to use it because you bought it and you're wondering what the heck was I thinking when I bought that? And you think if I just cut it up small enough, it'll be fine. It's okay, just get rid of it. Give it to somebody else who will love it and cherish it. You don't have to feel like you need to use it. You can, it's okay to call it ugly and give it to somebody else. Thing number eight that I do that the quilt police are gonna hate. This one's really gonna ruffle feathers. I don't bury my threads. We have a video on how to do it. That I have done it, I know how, I choose not to. But what you do is when you're quilting your quilt and like say you've broken a thread midway or you changed sections or you started in the middle of a block or something, you have tails of thread from your bobbin and your top bobbin and you're going to bury that and you hide it in between the layers and the batting. And so that way the idea is that it won't unravel over time with use and quilt judges really like it if you're doing it in a show you, you do need to do it in that case but my quilts are for me and they're for you guys to be excited about and burying threads takes a lot of time and as we've already gone over in this video time is something I do not have in abundance so what I do is I will backstitch or stitch in place a couple of times that is enough to secure the fabrics or the threads together and then I just snip it off. And you know what? There are some really famous, very well-known, award-winning quilters who do the same thing. If it is not gonna be for a show quilt, as long as you have that thread secured so it's not gonna unravel on you over time, 
just give it. Go ahead and give it a trim. Don't don't have to spend your time burying all those threads. It's okay. Where to? Thing number nine that I do that the quilt police are not going to like, and that's that I have no shame and no guilt about starting a new project when I have a lot of UFOs staring me in the face. I'm going to do something that you guys have not seen before. I'm going to show you my UFO stack. We did a video of how I organize my UFOs. I keep them in scrapbooking bins. It's a ridiculous amount of UFOs. Someday I'm going to tackle those when I do not have small children and my life settles down somewhat. But now is not that time. And I've got them there and they will get finished someday. It will happen. I will get to almost all of them. But today is not that day. And if I have a shiny new object that I want to make right here and now because I love this fabric in this moment, I'm, I'm going to make that thing and I'm not going to feel bad about it. And it's okay. So you shouldn't either. All right. So for the 10th thing that I do that the quilt police will not like, I had to pull my team and say, what should the 10th thing be? And they're like, you don't use steam in your iron. I'm like, yes, that's correct. I hate steam and irons hate it for a couple reasons. One, I feel like it shortens the life of your iron. And I were using an Aliso iron. Those things are not cheap. They're like 160 bucks. I do not want it to, it's life to be shortened at all ever. My last one lasted me like five or six years. And every single iron that I've ever put water into eventually spits and gets nasty gunk all over your white fabric that you can't get off. And I don't, I don't want that. I don't need that in my life. So I don't put water in for that reason. And I also don't put steam in because I feel like it distorts the fabric. If you are pressing and you need a seam to be super flat and have things not go wonky on you, it is really easy, especially if you don't know what you're doing to end up with a weird out of shape block because you use steam. So what I do instead, because I do like to use water in order to get things nice and flat, is I use a spray mister instead. What this does is it turns the water into a fine aerosol mist. And so when I spray it on my seams, I don't get big water droplets. I just get enough moisture on it to get a super flat press, especially when I pair it with my felt pressing mat. And it, it just works fantastic. And so I don't have to gunk up my iron and it doesn't get so much on there that it stretches things out of place. So I feel like this is like the best thing and I use it it is like a critical tool that I own. So I use this instead of steam and water in the iron. Well, I hope that that gives you permission to do things a different way than you were taught. Because a lot of times we just get it ingrained in our head that like, we have to do it this way because that's the way we were taught and that's the way it's always been done. That doesn't mean that that's the best way. It doesn't mean that it's the only way. It certainly doesn't mean that it's the best way for you. So there's more than one right way to do a thing in quilting. Usually there's more than one, more than two. Sometimes there's three, four right ways to do a thing. So as long as you are doing something that is giving you the results that you want and makes sense in your brain, then go for it, do it your way. So you may be like, Stephanie, I just can't, I can't press my seams open. Because maybe like a lot of, when we do our beginner quilting class, I teach people to press their seam over because I do think it's easier to get those seams to lock in place when they're pressed over when you're a beginner. That's how I taught my daughter. But as she gets more skilled, I'm gonna teach her to press those seams open and how to pin it. But you know, if you're, maybe you're not at that stage yet, maybe you are not ready to press those seams open. But when you are, I guarantee it's going to transform your quilting in the way your piecing looks. Guarantee, especially if you have anything with points or triangles, hands down, it's going to look fantastic if you press them open versus to the side. But, you know, just experiment. Do things a little differently, even if it's not the correct way. Like, it is, if it's a way and it works for you, do it. Just do it. Have fun. Don't worry about someone wagging their finger at you and the quilt police getting after you. So, have fun. That's the biggest thing. Have fun with your quilting. Let me know in the comments below what things you do that are contrary to the way you've been taught, but are absolutely like die hard. I have to do this in my quilting in order to get good results. I wanna know, I wanna know what they are. Maybe we can do a part two with all of your guys' suggestions. Cause I was thinking I have, I have more, like I was thinking of more things <laughs> as I was going through here. And you know, maybe we can do a part two with a few of mine, a few of yours. It could be really fun. So anyway, enjoy that. We normally do a bunch of tutorials. We show you some new fabric that we have, um, but make sure you check all those goodies out over at our website, shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. 
And in the meantime, happy quilting and don't let the quilt police get you down.